epidemiological curves. What are they, how do you make them, and how do you interpret them? This is the first of a two-part video series. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to create an epidemiological curve. I'll tell you a little bit about what they are as well, of course. And in the next video, I'm gonna tell you how to interpret them. Welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. My name is Greg Martin. If you're interested in infectious disease and outbreak control, then you're gonna to have to get used to and you're gonna to have to get your head around how to make and how to use epidemiological curves. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use a function in, the, in Microsoft Excel called the COUNTIF function. It's extremely useful. Once you know how to use it, you'll find yourself using it all the time. But first, a big thank you to the University of Notre Dame. This video is being made with support from the University of Notre Dame. The University of Notre Dame run a Master of Science in Global Health. It's absolutely outstanding. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this at the end of the video, so stay tuned. So remember, an epidemiological curve is a graphical or a visual representation of the onset of illness of cases in an outbreak. So the y-axis is the number of cases, the x-axis the time intervals during which the outbreak occurs. So at some point in time, our population of interest is exposed to a hazard. Now, we're talking about infectious disease, but remember, it doesn't have to be infectious disease. It could also be a chemical hazard, it could be radiation, but for the sake of these videos, we're gonna be talking about infectious disease. So after a period of time, and we call that the incubation period, people start becoming ill, and that's when they start being represented on the epi curve. And we represent them by a little block on the timeline at the time interval when they became sick. And for people that became ill within the same time frame, their little blocks get stacked on top of each other. These stacks become columns. And over time, these columns begin to take a shape. And we're gonna be talking in the next video about how to interpret those shapes. But for now, let's take a look at Microsoft Excel and look at how it is that you can create an epi curve. Okay, welcome to Microsoft Excel. I'm gonna show you how to use Microsoft Excel to count up the number of cases uh, that became unwell in a particular week and, and draw an epi curve with that. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a makeshift line listing. Each case is represented by a row. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask how many cases there were in any given week. The first thing I'm gonna suggest we do is we're gonna give this variable a name. To select the variable, go to the top, push Shift, Control, Down, it selects all the data. You give it a name up at the top on the left over here. We're gonna call it Week. Enter. We're gonna do the same thing with Sex. Shift, Control, Down. Use Shift, Command, Down if you're on a Mac. Give that a name, call it Sex. The reason we're interested in the week that a case became unwell is because the weeks are our time intervals that we're gonna use on our epi curve. And the reason I've used sex is because I'm actually gonna divide the data up into male and female cases. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a table. And you might think this is already a table. Actually, so far as Excel is concerned, it's not really a table yet. We need to tell Excel that this is a table. The reason we do that is so that if we get additional cases as this outbreak continues, and we add additional rows at the bottom of the tables, those variables that we've just named will automatically expand with that. And that means that our, our epi curve will, will automatically update itself. So to make it a table, go to the top left-hand corner. Again, shift control to the right, shift control down, that selects all the data. Simply go to insert and voila, it's a table. One little thing is we wanna go down here and it says my table has headers and we'll say okay. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna organize our data so that we can draw the epi curve. To do that, let's go to a new sheet. Our x-axis is gonna be weeks, so we need a value in one of these columns for weeks, so let's just make a column of weeks. So we just go one, two, three, and drag that down. The next column is gonna, we're gonna call cases. And in the first example that I'm gonna show you, we're just gonna count the number of cases in any given week. And to do this, we use the count if function. So let me show you how that works. We simply say equals count if, open brackets, and you'll see Excel actually tells us what it wants. The first thing that it wants is the range, and that's what we've already called week. So we type in the word week and put a comma. The next thing it wants is a criteria, and what we want to count within that range of weeks at first is just week one, close brackets, enter, and voila, as we expected, there are no cases in week one. If we click on this little dot at the bottom right hand corner of that cell, it's gonna copy the formula all the way down. We now have all the data that we need to draw our epi curve. To draw the epi curve, let's select the data. So it's shift control to the right and down. Our data is selected. We go to insert and columns and carries our epi curve. 
I'm not gonna neaten this one up. I'm actually gonna do another epicurve and then I'm gonna show you how it is that you should present them. For our next epicurve, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide the cases into males and females because we might be interested in how this outbreak is unfolding, what's driving it, what population is most affected. And it, wouldn't, it doesn't have to be males and females, you could have uh, confirmed cases and probable cases. You could have uh, what country they come from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're just gonna use males and females as an example. So I'm gonna type in the word male here and the word female there. Now we're gonna use the count if function again, but this time we're going to, it's gonna be count ifs with an S at the end, plural, because there's more than one criteria that it's gonna look at. It's gonna ask the question, how many cases were in week one and how many of those were male? And it's gonna come up with an answer and pop it in that cell. So equals count ifs with an S at the end, plural, open brackets. The first range we're gonna look at again is week, comma, what is it gonna look for in week? Well, we're gonna look for this value here, one, then just comma, the second range it's gonna look for is in, the, in the, the data that we called sex, we gave that a name earlier, and what is it gonna look for in that data? It's gonna look for this word over here, male, close brackets, enter, and as we suspected, there are zero males that became symptomatic in week one. Now we can't just drag this formula down and to the right yet. If we did that, it would be dragging not only the cell into which it was gonna place the answer, but it would also drag the cells that it's referring to. So we need to do one or two things just to make sure that this works, and I'll show you how to do that. If we click on the cell, we can see the formula. In this formula, we can see this little A2 here is referring to the blue cell there, and the B1 is referring to the red cell there. When we drag this formula across to the female column, we don't want this blue box to suddenly start looking in column B. We want it to stay in column A, so we put a little dollar sign in front of the A. And similarly, when we drag the formula down, we don't want this red box to suddenly start looking in row two. We want it to stay in row one, so we put a dollar sign in front of the one. Enter. Now we can drag the formula across, and again, click on the little box at the bottom right, and we've got all the data we need for our AP curve. To draw the AP curve, simply Control shift to the right and down. All the data is selected, go to insert, now we wanna select stacked columns. There's our epi curve and I'm gonna show you how to neaten that up. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this into a sheet of its own. So go to move chart, say new sheet, and let's give that a name and voila, we're in a new sheet. There's a couple of things we can do to make this even better. What we wanna do is we wanna add a few elements. For example, we wanna add axis titles, horizontal and vertical, so let's do that. We want our legend to be nice and neatly on the right and it's quite nice to get rid of the gaps. Your title needs to include what disease you're talking about, what time frame you're talking about, and what location this all happened in. And voila, we have an epi curve. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the Master of Science in Global Health program that's run by the University of Notre Dame. If you're interested in studying global health, then please click on the link that's on the screen right now, click on the link that's in the description below this video, and find out more about what the University of Notre Dame offer in their Master of Science in Global Health. The University of Notre Dame's program gives you an excellent grounding in the science that underpins global health practice. Now I must tell you, one of the things that really, really impresses me about the program at Notre Dame is their incredible commitment to the students, but not just while they're teaching you, not just while you're a student there, once you've graduated, there's this incredible alumni and the faculty go to great lengths to keep everybody in touch and to help you find that next step in your career. Needless to say, I'm a huge fan of the program. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.